good evening guys and good morning depending on where you are in the world this is a south american flight so anybody from that side of uh, the western hemisphere good morning to you guys and welcome to south america this airport was suggested to me by a good friend angel he's one of the members there on the zebo community group and he is also one of the developers of this airport so this is in honor of him and um, i hope that he's going to join us a little bit later on the stream as well hey rainer good evening at you in germany thank you for joining me so um i'm going to give you the the drop down and the low down on this flight just now in a second um I just want to quickly get all the detail in front of me because I'm not very familiar with this area. So, okay, here we go. This airport is uh, Jorge Chavez and this is in uh, Peru. And we're going to fly to Carlos Martinez, which is a little bit north. And I'm going to quickly get some uh, detail on the screen here for you guys. So you guys can have a look. Alright, so that is approximately what we are looking at. I did change the star a little bit due to wind. And we can actually uh, do that now as well. Um, and this seems to be a little bit of a beta bug with uh, our friends if it's there at um, Navigraph. So be with me let's change this this now need to be that and the approach is coming from uh, that mountainy side right we wanted to use the ILS but for some reason that was a problem uh, due to the wind now so we're going to just change that I'm still not 100% familiar with exactly how uh, this new Navigraph works so I'm not sure how we're going to delete the ILS one there. As far as I'm concerned, once we choose a different approach, it needs to drop the other one. But it doesn't seem to want to do that. Hmm. All right, well, it's much of a muchness. We'll sort it out. Hello, Paul. We're going to sort this out when we get there in the aircraft and do the actual programming. So that's just an indication. Um, I quickly had a look at the weather. We don't seem to have rain in this area. We're going to fly from this area down there up to that place over there. So seems to be good, good enough weather for a good flight. Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Do you guys have sound? According to my system, it says that there should be sound, but please, um, Yoki, good evening. Excellent. John, I'm going to start my Discord, and guys, if any of you want to join us on Discord, you're welcome. It'll be up and running in a minute, so you're welcome to join us. All right, so um, I've also discovered that I was a bit too clever for myself in my earlier stream uh, today and also while redesigning this whole 
um, check, well, uh, OFP for PFPX. And for those of you that were not on uh, the stream this morning, if you go into my private hangar, there is a version 2 of my OFP that you guys can see on the screen now. And uh, I, I was really clever when I made this and I actually caught myself this morning not remembering how clever I was. So I'm quickly going to tell you what, what happened. Um, I've changed the fuel planning side of things completely. One of the things I realized during the week is I get the right values, but I don't show you guys where I get it from. So one of the new things that I did add, which was in but not visible earlier, was the hold fuel that I program in, as well as the extra fuel. Something that I never had included before was the minimum takeoff fuel required. And then what happened was, um, you know, some of the calculations obviously happened at the end of the day, and we ended up with our takeoff fuel but not a true block fuel kind of thing. So, uh, and then also on the taxi side, there was a bit of an, an issue with calculations. So it wasn't a train smash. It wasn't something that prevented the Zebo from actually using the values or to actually balance. And one of the strange things with PFPX is the rounding that these guys use. Um, so at the end of the day, I, I, I've, try to rework everything to make a little bit more sense so um, I want you guys to take note of a few things we we are now sitting with a situation where now that the calculations are actually working we can't actually add the block fuel into the Zebo anymore because the Zebo wants the takeoff uh, fuel weight which is this one over there that is what the zebo is going to look at um, in the previous version we always came to this page we used the fuel and we used the payload and we actually balanced the takeoff weight but now that i've actually split the hairs so to speak i mean i really nice. went all out on to the calculations here if we use this fuel over there we're going to be too heavy because that fuel includes our taxi fuel and by the time we take off uh, we're going to have 100 kilograms less, uh, which brings us back to our takeoff fuel over there. All right, so that's going to be the correct value. I'll, I'll show you guys as we continue. Hey, John, how are you? Excellent, mate. Thank you so much for joining me. Guys, again, if anybody else wants to join me, you're welcome to join us on Discord. John, I hope I hope uh, you have finished your flight, or did you pause it now? All right, okay, that's excellent, excellent. All right, well, um, Angel from the Zebo Group is one of the developers of this airport where we are at now. And he said he'll try his best to be here. And uh, it was his suggestion for this flight tonight. So we're going to fly in his valley. And I hope you guys enjoy it with me. Great stuff. So I just want to quickly finish off this whole big story that I was talking about. And now that I understand exactly what I did and how we got the calculations, it's actually freaking hilarious that I made such a a big mistake this morning but anyway we, we, we got it right in the end uh, your English is okay my friend um, I have absolutely no idea how to pronounce your name properly for me it says in sir um, if that's incorrect I apologize um, but you're welcome on the stream and I hope you enjoy it with us and give it your best shot. You're welcome to use Google Translate if you need to or ask me to do that with you as well. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Alright, so John, have a look at this. Have a look at this. If you can look on the screen then, we're going to look at the actual fuel. When, when we... Yeah. Yeah, so, so what happens is, <laughs> I was too clever for myself this morning. 
but basically we've got the payload right and the payload we're still going to get from this page so we've got 16.9 that is our actual payload that's true and correct but when you actually break down the fuel itself there are two things that you need to take into account the Zebo tablet wants the takeoff weight T-O-W that's takeoff weight all right you're not going to get the actual takeoff weight if you put block fuel in there it's not going to work because block fuel is 6.8 over there but our takeoff fuel is 6.7 you understand so if we go and we say 6.8 Right, we're going to end up with a takeoff weight of 65.1 and if we look over here, PFPX is... Well, there's no need for a chart, the, the screen is split. You should see the PDF and you should see the, the tablet at the same time now. Okay, press Control F5 on your browser. Yeah, I'm with it now. All right, Paul, is that better? Can you hear John now? Uh, in, anyway, I've just unmuted him. Sorry, that was also something that happened. Okay, so so you've got it on the screen now. Can I start again? Can I show you again? Yes, please, and, uh, and apologies. All right, no worries. So remember, in my previous version of my OFP, all right, I always used the fuel over there. 6.8 right then we use the payload over there 16.9 now on the tablet you can see I've entered the values 16.9 and 6.8 you see that yes sir all right the problem with using this fuel over here this is the block fuel this isn't your takeoff fuel all right in the tablet you can clearly see Zebo is saying take off weight so we need to balance the take off weight and the way to do that is to now look at the way I've actually split everything you need to use the take off fuel weight not the block fuel weight because by the time you get to the threshold you have used up the taxi fuel you see there yeah. does that now make sense so now what we yeah, do is absolutely. now we put six point seven and check magically it's now going to match 65.0 there you go now the tablet matches now the calculations are fine and i was sitting here scratching my head this morning why am i out again because you're not supposed to be out the calculation should be fine anyway that I, I need to be looking at sim brief again because i'm always looking at the block fuel yeah and that's what I, uh, I enter yeah so okay let, let's let's make a long story short in that regard it's not wrong to use the block fuel the only thing that's going to happen is your takeoff weight is not going to be exactly the same on the tablet as it is you know on the OFP all right so if you want to split airs I've just told you how to do it correctly but nobody's okay. nobody's going to shout at you for using block fuel nobody's going to say to you oh you did it wrong you failed the test there is no test you know it's just me being my um you know over Perfection. perfectionist Perfection. you know and and my ocd kicked in i wanted this thing to actually match you know you've also got an inquiry in mind you want to know why exactly exactly so that that is what happened can you believe it oh, anyway yes i can yeah all right so let's continue with our work over here Come on, man. I hate this mouse. You keep telling us that, Nico. I'm going to throw it away this week. I'm telling you, once I get pay, I'm going to throw this bloody thing away. It's just highly irritating because it never goes where you want it to go. You have got to, to aim, aim, aim the whole time. It's just a waste of time. 
Anyway, we'll get there. I was over there, there. there. I'm buying you a new mash just to so I don't hear any more. <laughs> sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I'll, I will skip the record next time. We, we won't go there uh, again. Right, six minutes to alignment. Let's just sort out all this lighting. So guys, I hope you've uh, had a good Saturday for those of you that are into it already and for those of you that are just starting your Saturday, I hope you're enjoying it. <coughs> yeah, the Rottweilers. I'm going to feed this to my little dogs. I'm telling you now. They're going to eat it up. Naughty mouse. Oh, don't let the Rottweiler out again. <laughs> yeah, we're going to feed it. Right, let's get all these fancy letters in place. When I looked at this SPRU, my mind immediately wants to put the U in front of the R. And if there's any South Africans watching the stream, you'll know why. Because it spells the Spur, Spur Restaurants. And they kind of make nice food. So SPRU is for me like, huh? No, you should change that around. Spru. Yeah. Now a very good question. Where is my charts now? Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how this thing works. Show the chart overlay for me, please. That one then goes to SLS. Right uh, there is LS. Uh, 
that one. Let's see what this all nav is all about. Well, that does not make sense because now the whole star is coming from that side of the valley. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to use that one and then we're going to see what it looks like just now. Right, so we're going to cut out that one whole section. Get them. Oh, we can use that kit now then, and we can go to... much better Why are they not linked? Where is the discontinuity? Oh, 74. And then 752. I don't see that they are connected. Well, there's no vectors. Yeah, the blue line is missed approach. Right, this is actually kind of interesting because I don't see an actual connection between those two waypoints, 754 and 752. So we'll handle it when we get there and then we're just going to step through our missed approach there. So everything looks perfectly fine. Alright, I'm happy with this. This is going to make life a little bit easier than to go into the mountains and then try and work our way back. Zero. That's perfect. Then our trip is going to be 2.8 for the plant fuel on that one. 1.1 1 .1 is going to be our reserves and the cost index we're going to use 20. Right, we're going to fly at what did we say? Flight level 260. Oops, wrong one. Six zero. We'll do a step climb if we see there's enough time and space for that. And fifteen. 
Wow, so it's hot over here. Seven on the same temperature we're going to do delayed it too but we're going to climb right take off is going to be flux five I'm not gonna do all those advanced things tonight I'm just gonna skip them we don't need them every time Right, let's see now, where are we on this airport? Right, we need to then push back to our left, so we're going to use runway 15 for takeoff. Okay, so question, do you want APU start or do you want an ASU start? Which one would you guys prefer tonight? I'll keep out of it. Alright, well, we've got a couple of viewers. Let's see, guys, cast your vote. Tell me. Air starter. Okay, there's one vote. No good being awkward unless you show it. Alright, we've got two on the ASU there. Looks like that's what it's going to be. 
Yeah. Definitely. Alright, so let's connect our ASU over there. GPU is on, blocks on, everything is fine. John, just to help you out, we're not going to look for the melon right now, okay? Okay. Mr. Dale, the accents on better pushback changes with country uh, or continent for that matter. So uh, I have absolutely no control over that. It changes with continent, I suppose. Rainer, yeah, I'm glad you learn. I, I still learn to this. Um, has not been a good evening for me with the Navigraph charts. I... I need to go and spend more time on them and learn them. It was easy enough at the airports and the routes that I know how to use it and how to manipulate it. But to try and use it now in this scenario on the fly uh, just irritated me. Um, so I'm just smiling. Right, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to call Better Pushback now, request our pushback. Ground complete. Tower is driving up. And we're going to follow our normal starting procedure. So we're going to see we've got zero fuel in our center tank. So those pumps play off, the rest go on. We're going to enable our beacon. And then, very importantly, we need to make sure that we have duct pressure from our ASU. If we don't have enough duct pressure, we can't start the engine. Right, then, the next thing that we need to realize is that ASU is parked on our right hand side over there so we cannot start engine number two because we don't want to cause injury or death so we're going to start engine number one first so we're going to wait until our tug is connected Right, so according to the normal startup procedures, what we also need to make sure is that left and right packs are off and our isolation valve needs to be open. We are not using the APU, clearly it's off, there's no life on the APU, so the APU bleed stays off. We're going to keep the bleeds on the engines on and when we're ready we're just going to crank up engine number one then. And we'll do that after we've been told that we're ready for pushback. Tell connected and bypass being inserted. Release parking brake. Alright, so that's our cue. What we're going to do is simply a normal startup now. So we're going to wait for 25% on in two there and just inject our fuel. Do me a favor, don't do what that other guy did and took the air unit with him when he took off. Oh yeah, no, no, we won't do that. Did you see that? Oh uh, no. Yeah, took took the air unit with him. Hey, Angel, welcome, my friend. This um, this is your airport, so fantastic job, and thank you for suggesting this to us. And nice, nice to have you here. Well, see what you can see of the stream then. Right, alright, so engine number one is now stable. Uh, it's locked over and we can actually put it on the bus. Alright. What we can do at this point in time is we can actually disconnect the GPU as well as the air starter unit because they are done. Alright. Thanks Angel. Uh, you did drive safe. Um, so guys, we've got 
a couple of options now we can start engine two then do the pushback we can do the pushback then start engine two or we can in fact do the whole taxi up to the holding point and then only start the engine the main fact of the matter is that uh, we need to just get whatever procedure it is that we're going to to use so let's let's do the pushback and start the engine uh, before taxi then so after the disconnect of the tug we'll just start that one Paul, no, no minimum time like that. Here you are. Hey, one. Yes, Angel. Yeah, I. I realized that um, that's why in the stream I said you're one of the developers because you obviously laid the foundation for whatever uh, Jorge came and did, yes, yeah? so uh, fair enough. Evening, Kev. Evening, Angel. Evening, Yorkie. John, as a matter of interest, I've just noticed on the chart here this transition altitude is 10,000 feet. Interesting. Yeah. 5,000 for where I've just landed in France. All right. Non-ILS approach, by the way. Okay. Operation complete. Set parking brake. All right, let's get that brake on. There we go. Disconnecting tow. Stand by. Right, okay, so once this guy is disconnected, we're going to then wait for the pin and then we'll start up engine number two. Hey, Kevin. I'm not sure if I said welcome, but you're welcome. Yes, you are agree, it's very, very nice. That will disconnect it, and that bus beam has been removed. I'm seeing now on the right. We'll see you next time, and have a safe flight. Rainer, um, all you do is you go to plugins and you go to AVI tab over there, you toggle the tablet and you click on that button Navigraph over there and then follow the prompts, you know, um, so it must be there. If you don't have it, you just need to reinstall the AVI tab itself from Fulco, because that's not the Zebo thing. Right gents, so now what we need to do is we need to get our duct pressure up because the duct pressure is way too low. This engine number two will never start and the way we do that is we're going to increase the thrust on engine number one and then we're going to make sure that we get to 35% again. Alright, so there we go, that's 35% there. 
lucky shot that was all right and then we just do the same start procedure as always you're welcome Rainer Johan, that's the second time you're telling me. Yes, stop it, stop it. He sounds like me with a mouse. He's a broken record now. We'll have and to set he, him straight. He wants something to break all the time. <laughs> He's probably laughing his ass off at the ass too now. He's peeing himself. Yeah. All right, so we're just waiting. There we go. It's stable. We can put engine 2 on the bus and do the normal thing then yeah right so then we just pull back on throttle number one there so that we don't waste some precious fuel there and just get it back to idle and at this, this point in time we can obviously now go and set our uh, ordinary uh, pressurization settings right so packs need to go to auto and isolation valve goes to auto and again we don't touch APU bleed because there was never any APU uh, involved any fuel um, imbalance it's probably going to be a slight imbalance about 400 kilograms we'll sort that out later or we can just do this right now why not let's just get the cross feed going and then switch off this is not critical guys on 400 kilograms it really isn't critical we we obviously splitting is again now but if if you want to do a cross feed you know you can do it now or you can do it in the cruise whenever you feel like it the the fact of the matter is that there is a, a slight imbalance in the fuel tanks now so um, we'll just keep an eye on it and get it close enough to the other one all right while we're waiting we might as well set our flaps 5 to take off now on idle it's going to take a wee while to burn off the 400 kilograms um, once we start taxing it's probably going to increase the rate of fuel burn and well it will and then get the imbalance sorted quicker I'm like you and causing chaos <laughs> Right, there we're down to 300 kilograms. Let's check our volts and amps. 58.4. Uh, perfect. Uh, we've got flaps 5 and a green light over there. We've got green lights over here. Flaps 5 set. Taxi. Turn off lights. There we go. Let's go, go do our thing. In hindsight, I was supposed to turn the other way because that's the taxiway. So now we're just going to follow the apron a bit. Keeping an eye on the fuel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're down to down 200 kilograms already. In actual fact, that's not 200 kilograms, that's 20 kilograms. There's another 10 kilograms. Uh, sorry, I must get my scale right. So we lost about 40 kilograms here, which is even less to worry about. Oh my goodness. Just wondering what's the cheaper option, the APU or the air starter? I think the APU. Because when you start um, putting uh, the thrust in to get that duct pressure up, that um, jet You're engine. Burning a, hell of a lot of fuel. Yeah. Right, there we go, 3.3 .3 both sides. I 
right, keep your eyes on your own while I go and get a coffee that it doesn't cause any more chaos. I'll do that. <laughs> Thank you, we are definitely going to try. Right, TA RA on. Everything seems fine. Let's go. Approaching one, five. On runway one, five. Uh, Johanna was thinking about that earlier. Um, I couldn't recall which exact airport it was, but um, now that you've uh, reminded me, I need to go and try it over there.
please keep Nico busy on route. It's a hell of a game to nudge him to wake up again else. <laughs> Thank you, John. Must be, must be. I'm actually, yeah, Kevin says the same. I'm in agreement with you. I'm actually busy trying to get the Navigraph charts sorted. Then we can look at that as well. We can see what it looks like and what it does and does not do. This guy okay, well, I'll, I'll nudge you on the uh, message board if you, if you fall asleep. 100%. While the aircraft's climbing, um, let me show you what I'm busy doing. I mean, maybe that's of more interest to you than just looking at that. So, what I want to do is I want to change a couple of things here. So, what's this waypoint called? Fugal. That's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, okay, so now it looks right, you see. When you have time and you don't rush things, you can actually get it to work. So that is our actual departure. And that's our actual arrival. So we don't have to go into the mountains to that place over there. Rainer, this is this is something we're gonna have to get used to, my friend. Um, like you said earlier also busy with this and learning it um, I'm just not used to this interface and 
I was trying to obviously rush it earlier, so my apologies for that. But in in having a quiet moment and just thinking about it and working it out, it, it actually looks kind of nice, really nice. Okay, so I full well know that I did modify this plan in the FMC, so it's probably going to not be exactly the same as this, but we can also try fiddle with it to get it more precise if we really wanted to. I'm happy with the thing as is, I don't want to fiddle too much. Alright, then. short overlay for that one. Is that short? That's fine, that's fine. Rainer, very true. Um, <coughs> I still use, in a normal flight situation, I still use my PFPX and use the visual cues on that one to set up everything for me and then I import into um, the Navigraph. For some reason I started the other way around and I started fiddling with Navigraph and then went to um, EFPX and I think that's also part of my learning curve. I shouldn't change my habits, you know, because I can shoot myself in the foot it seems for no reason. One of those silly things. That's because you've got an inquiring mind. Yeah, I go and fiddle and find out too much. Um, but it's fine, it's just who I am. I've got to figure things out. Right, so, that that's that thing. We are well on our way to do this flight. And thank you guys for leading with me there. This is awesome. I feel much better now. Well, Paul, let's have a look-see. I've just noticed you're talking about the view on the right there. Uh, I've got my lights. We'll change that now. We are a bit far off. I don't think we can see much. But it would have been nice to see the mountains and the things. So we're at our cruise altitude and we've got 164 nautical miles to go. We can climb if we really want to. Do we want to? Not really, not at 60, 164 is nothing, is it? Yeah, exactly. You're looking at what? I'm trying to think. About 22, 22 minutes? Yeah, exactly. Let's leave it at that. I'm just thinking of the struggle to get back down again if we start yeah. going up. Exactly. No, no, we'll leave it. We'll leave it. Ladies and gentlemen, once again from the flight deck, we'll level off now at our cruising altitude. I want to go ahead and turn off the fasten seatbelt sign. I'd like to quickly ask if you are staying in your seats to keep those seatbelts comfortably fastened for your safety. Onboard computer charge and on time arrival. No ETC delays either. We're going to stay quiet up here, have you enjoy the uh, flight and the service. Once again, welcome aboard. It's a bit quiet back there tonight. We haven't got Escobar on tonight.
no comment, Paul. I too have got web FMC but sadly it doesn't work. It was working for ages and then suddenly stopped. So I've ended up uh, paying. Now I don't use any of them, I, I use the, the tablet. It certainly hasn't happened to me, and I've, I've, I've got uh, four flights in on 221. Phil, it depends on the phase of flight. Um, it depends on how you set up your flight. Um, if we look at my FMC now, we go to cruise, it's still there. So it depends on what you do, how you do it, and why you did it, you know. so. It's not supposed to disappear.
Well, if it gives you that message, Reiner, it means you've started your descent already, so your cruise altitude is irrelevant at that point in time. Um, if that's the message, it, it means you've started descent already. That's weird. That's weird. Okay, well it could be a bug, it's it's possible. It's it obviously she didn't do that. Sierra Papa Romeo Uniform Airport Information India 1700 Zulu Weather Wind 172 at 12 Visibility 10000 Sky Clear Temperature 212.18 QNH 1013 Vise on initial contact We have information India Sierra Papa Romeo Uniform Airport Information India 1700 Zulu Weather Wind 172 at 12 Visibility 10 Did you try and do a level change maybe? Go to a different altitude and then reset or did you cycle your uh, VNAV perhaps? I'm actually talking after the fact to try and get it back. Yeah, something went wrong there guys, I'm not sure what it was, but something definitely went wrong there. And you couldn't trigger it on VS? Yeah, Johan, that's also one of the things I was thinking of, you know, just go to a different altitude, make it reset. Frustrating. Mm, something went wrong, I just don't know what. I cannot tell you what. Did you start the flight with this uh, Cessna 172 at least? So maybe it's a script that bombed on you or something. Good, at least you stuck with it. Mm. Well, I've got my web FMC open on my lap here, yeah, and I'm watching the same page as you guys see there, so we'll check. We'll see if it disappears at DD. Uh, 
that's about the only thing I can think of that would make it disappear. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good reason. I'm using Air FMC now. Air FMC, is that the one? It's payway. Good on you, Phil. I've just completed five, my fifth one. Did two today. Hello Jacob, and welcome from Monterey. I'm having myself a bit of coffee. I'm waiting for top of descent to happen here, yeah, and then we'll see what happens. One thing I did get penalised on, too soft a landing. And 205 points is a very good uh, bunch of points there. Excellent set. Absolutely. What are you using as your hub, Phil? I'm glad you guys like flying for uh, virtual Ryanair and, and so on and the Rainer that you do the VEZ and KLM as well. I also do most of them, I just don't do KLM. Well, my feelings at the moment, I'm not going to fly anything unless I'm actually doing a route for Ryanair. Oh, okay. No, it gives, it all gives, my flights are going to be, yeah, it all gives, of them. gives you a reason to fly, it gives you a purpose. You know? Makes you feel good. You get points. You get rank. You, you get somewhere. Sorry, Ann, I never saw you uh, as as waiting. As soon as I've got a few, I shall uh, try states side with Delta. Mm. Awesome. Hey, Ann, you're a bit soft, eh? Well done, Kev. Oh, you guys. I'm so proud of you. Thank you, that, that really means a lot to hear that. Um, I'm just trying to be real, you know, be myself, those things. If you guys find value in it, I love it. Phil, you've got problems if you can't find enough uh, routes with Ryanair. You've got hundreds.
Well, Rainer, I'll quickly get rid of some more of the volume and then you tell me what it sounds like now. How's that? Is that better? Okay, cool. Yeah, you guys Happy must. Pilot. Yeah, you guys must feel free to tell me if volumes aren't correct or to your liking. Um, I've got this fancy little um, Lua script that I can set all kinds of values, you know, without fussing too much, and then I'll try to make everybody happy. You normally do. Right, so let's get our seatbelts on. Well, you can always change your hub. For sure, pick a hub that's busy, you know, Stansted or Manchester or one of these big ones. Uh, Porto, where I'm at, man, that thing's busy, damn it, that thing flies all over the place. It's amazing how many flights you get from there. <laughs> yeah, Rainer, as long as we get it right at the end, then I'm happy. I've got similar problems out of uh, Leeds Bradford, Phil. So I'm, I'm going to probably have to move my hub. That's correct. Porto, yeah. I'm, I've got Porto as my hub. Remember, most of my Zipo test flights happen between Porto and Lisbon. You know, up and down, up and down. And uh, I said to um, Jorge the other day, oh, a couple of months ago already, I, I moved my hub there because then when I fly all these tests, I get actual, you know, brownie points with Ryanair, you know. If it's any use to you, Phil, don't forget that Stansted is Ryanair's um, home. Yeah, the main home hub. Folks from the uh, flight deck, we've suffered a descent. Should have you in the ground in about 15 minutes. Want to thank you so much for your company and business and hope to see you again with us sometime very soon. No, only that uh, most airlines have their own hub for their base. <laughs> Paul, <laughs> you funny. Uh, yeah, I've just yeah. seen it. Rainer, in, in real world, your hub is supposed to be as close as possible to your home so that you are able to see your family when you get off work. Otherwise, you end up living in a hotel. So a hub is very important in that regard. Um, it's your main base of operations where you are stationed. So you're going to have your own manager there, your own, you know, whatever you need is going to be revolving around that area. You know, if, if you get... You, you stay in uh, close to Stansted, but you work from Porto, you're never going to see the wife and kids, you know, so bear that in mind. I'm relocating to Manchester. Yeah, in terms of the virtual flying, it's also important because it depends on your flights. There's only so many flights from each hub, you know, even though you were talking dozens and dozens. We, we me and John discussed it earlier. If you look at Ryanair, they've got so many hubs and so many flights and combinations of flights. It's going to take you a, a year or three or more to fly every route. You know, there's a lot to fly. Um, but even so, you don't want to get to a state of boredom as well. So it's nice to look around and see where you get a whole bunch of flights from. And loads of promotions to look forward to. Yeah, yeah if you're a bachelor, you have a field day, absolutely.
I'm sure you will with all those stewardesses. <laughs> or, or, or trolley dollies as we call them. Sorry, I was thinking aloud. Shouldn't have said that. <laughs> I can also think of a couple of things, but I also I just get quiet. <laughs> Some things are not said in public. Listen, the stewardesses on Singapore Airlines are not the same dollies that go on uh, Ryanair. <laughs> Trolley dollies. <laughs> oh man, I'm not one for too much political correctness. I grew up in an era when men were men and women were women. Mate, take your pick. Uh, Ryanair. No, no, we talked about Ryanair. <laughs> I'm obviously missing some of the news forms. <laughs> Guys, by the way, while I'm sitting here thinking, um, I started making a little tutorial video on the air starter, which will be a standalone tutorial. Um, so keep a look out for that probably in the next day or two I'll upload it onto YouTube um, uh, It's gonna be short and sweet. I think about five minutes if even just to run you guys through that I just thought maybe it will be a good idea to have a little standalone tutorial as well All those vids are useful Mhm. Mm they're good references Yeah, um, once once the code is fully implemented, we'll do one on the uh, de-icing trucks as well because you guys need to understand the parameters and things like that because if you don't use it properly, you won't be able to get this aircraft to go anywhere. Um, the plan is to implement the code in such a way that uh, it will be simulating real world, you know, like most of the stuff Lubos does, in fact, all these stuff. It's done like that so well you, you've got until November early December yeah so that the, let me give you a quick rundown what basically happens is you need to run the uh, fluid for three minutes so you need to spray the aircraft for three minutes and that will give you 45 minutes hot and if you do not take off within 45 minutes you have to do it again Um, Phil, yeah, I don't keep tabs on flight deck to sim. I pop in there every now and then. Uh, he probably did make some of his stream about that. But um, the code is not changed as such. There's new code that needs to be implemented. I'm just not sure whether Lubos has finished implementing the code or not. Um, at the end of the day, when it is fully done, and I am aware that it's fully done, we're going to have to tell you guys how to use it. Otherwise, can you imagine the kind of support? Oh, my aircraft's not starting. My aircraft's not moving. And it fell out of the sky. <laughs> so to prevent that, we'll, we'll get our ducks in there and make a nice video. Jan, there's different colors, my friend. I know of at least three different colors. So... Um, I'm not sure if uh, Lupus will give us the option to change the colors 
based upon the type of the fluid um, at this point in time all I know is that it's using the particle system and it looks kind of cool I'm assuming the colors are uh, dependent on the temperatures yeah it, it, it's different strengths yeah the the intensity to, to get rid of the ice yes Well, Paul, there's some of your scenery coming into view now. Um, every time I fly into a new area and I see something nice, I think ortho. Mm, I need ortho. I still need to go and make ortho for a couple of places in the U.S. now. They're in Washington State. And I think this will be an excellent other place to have it, to have a, a bit of ortho. See how lost you are without your ortho. Oh man, it feels bad. John, I need another six terabyte, my friend. What can I do to get another one? Behave yourself. <laughs> You've got no chance. You've had one. <laughs> John, I thought you loved me. No, no, no. One's enough. No, 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 no. That's a wrong answer. You should say, I love you, but one's enough. That's you know I do, but you're not getting another one. <laughs> Uh, well, you you really blessed me with that. I tell you what, I couldn't have done the also that I did without that day. Eh? That was absolutely marvelous. It was good timing, wasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Could have done nice. without the taxman getting involved, mind. Bastard. Um, run out of space. I'm almost out of six terabytes. Yeah, I think I've got one terabyte left, or just under one terabyte left. So, when I make also now, it needs to count. You know, I need to make sure I make it in the right places. This will definitely be one of my choices. I want to do, um, like I said, a little bit more of Washington State, uh, because the other day me and Cloudy flew out to Spokane, and I was under the impression I had also there. And then when we got there, so I didn't, and I really, really need to cover that area. If any of you guys get uh, bored and you want a challenge, try Con Contin. Ton Contin, yes. Sorry, Ton Contin. Yeah. That's another place where you beautiful, really... Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. No, you really need also there. In fact, I think I did make the... Yeah, way big, way big, big planet. Hmm. Okay, I better South check. South America. To be at three Why is it so special? It's the approach. It's bloody dangerous. Excuse the language. It's bloody dangerous. Yeah. Um, well, not just that. Um, it's it's also got a nostalgic uh, value for some of us, and it's one of those special approaches where you've got to kind of dip. It reminds me a lot of Saint Bart's, you know, where you've got a special way of landing you can't just come in there and land if any of you ever go and fly Don Quentin, you'll know exactly what I mean it's it's something special Ooh, I need to get this sorted now and if you can put some ortho into it as well oh amazing No, it's definitely not for Ryanair. No. I had the pleasure of watching Cloudy fly into it. Oh, it's wow. amazing. Me, I've wow, seen him many wow, times. Wow. I've watched him many times do that. Uh, that. You see, that's part of the nostalgic reasons, because he used to fly in there in the real world in the 70s, you know, so it, it means a lot. It were butter. Oh, trust me, it were butter. 
Right, okay, I'm gonna take it off autopilot now. There's no point in keeping this on autopilot and let's get rid of our auto thrust as well. Yeah, we're distracting him. He needs to concentrate what he's doing now. Have a look at your hands video, I presume it's about Don Quinton, so have a look there. Yeah, that was a very risky thing. Yeah. I think it touched down almost in the middle of the highway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, how, how, how he managed to stop that by not going on the Um, I've got, uh, where, where's it, Jacob? Um, I've got a shortcut on my joystick that I use to just disconnect the um, autopilot uh, but the proper way of disconnecting is to hit that bar over there and then you just disconnect your auto throttle as well and that that's then you, you disconnect it Unfortunately, I've got the MCP. Approaching minimums. Five and minimums. Approaching the bar two, out. zero. Yeah. Four hundred. Yeah, I think so. I think that's the one. Bus. Shall try. Four hundred. Four hundred. Four a little bit long on this one. Three thousand feet remaining. Really nice. Anybody would think he's done it before, wouldn't you? Right? <laughs> Trust me, he's been practicing all day. No, 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 I didn't. No, I, didn't. I was busy with other stuff. Thanks, guys. Um, as I came in, I realized that the threshold was massive. I mean, look how long that was, right? And I was actually scared I'm going to land in front of the actual runway. That's why I started floating. <laughs> oh, I just kept it up too long. Everybody survived. That's all that matters. Yeah, look, the first 3,000 foot of the runway is the touchdown zone. I was still in the touchdown zone, and that's all that counts. If that fails beyond, you got to worry about. Yeah. On runway, zero, two. And the fences, and the shrubs, and the pit holes. Yeah, and the sea, and, you know, any bottles yeah, that you even get that. Away. Trees are a bit of a problem as well, you know. Mm -hmm. They tend to rip wings off, make you stop sooner rather than later. Put excessive G on your body, and that's what kills you. That's why you should be strapped in, Nico. 
Oh, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> Tree save your brakes. <laughs> I love you guys. <laughs> I think we probably have the best bunch of guys when we fly together like this ever. I don't see all the fun like what we are having on other streams. Hey guys, thank you so much for that. It really means a lot. <laughs> Death by deceleration. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, you know what? Before we go anyway. You got a good point there, Rainer. Uh, we've got too many trolls. Too far too many trolls. Too many bucket mads. Too much bad language. And it needs jumping on because it's, it just drags the site down. Absolutely. And none of it's needed. It yep. really isn't. But this is the tower view. I've taken it a, a wee back, so I want to see the whole turn and everything that, as it happens. That's about where I killed the autopilot, so we'll see now. I want some perspective. You've got it, there it is. You, you, you've heard, have you? <laughs> <laughs> and that was me thinking I was in incognito. Not a John, say. <laughs> this bloody mountain makes it look spectacular. Looks like I turned close and I didn't. I wasn't close to that mountain. We've already done that. Trouble is he sneaks onto a Ryanair occasionally. Yeah. He snuck onto Skymatics as well. Can you imagine that with Ortho, Nico? Yeah, oh, I'm sitting here thinking the same thing. And do the do this flight again when you've got some ortho on it. I'll do, I'll do, I'll do. I'm just thinking about screenshots, you see. Mm hmm Reminds me a bit of um Limoroska Whiskey India. Lowy. Mm. There's another airport. I must actually show you guys that. Um airport here yeah, that uh, Angel Alpaca showed me earlier today. I'm going to show you that, that airport. Yeah, this is an amazing approach mm. from the tower. I've got a feeling that pilot knows what he's doing, you know. <laughs> Hey, George. Hi, George. Oh, better late than on never. On replay. Yeah, we are on replay. You're correct. I wonder. Mm. 
needs to float. Drag it out, Nico, drag it out. Ah, oh, lovely. Wow. You can't complain with that. No, that's beautiful, man. Why in slow motion? <laughs> They're having a pop at you, George. No, I'm used to it as well, George. Oh, that is so lovely. So that was beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful approach. Yeah, good night to you, Rana. Bye bye, Rainer. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye, Rainer. That's the shot I like, the wing shot. Yeah. I don't know why. Just one of those shots I love to watch. Sure. I get it, I also like it. Jacob, I use a uh, Cytec Pro Flight yoke and combat rudder pedals. I've got the Cessna trim wheel and a CH throttle quadrant. Eight hundred. Jacob, it does. Uh, the moment I take my hand off it, it returns to center. <clears throat> In real life, mm, no. Mm -mm. no In the real life, no, it doesn't return. Uh -uh. No, you've got to fly it. You're given the what normally uh, yeah, it crash. Goes the, it goes back to the center, but you know the aerodynamic uh, uh, wind flow over the wing press it back to the center. Not, right? not all the way. No, not all the way. No, 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 no. It all, also depends on if you are in a turn or not. If you are flying straight and level, yes, that is possible. If you're starting to make a turn, there's going to be more pressure on the one side than the other side. You understand? So it all depends on the airflow over them. Um, 
there is no spring in the real thing that will pull it back to center. Um, if the aerodynamic forces doesn't push it back into a special place, it doesn't go into a special place. You know, it's just it, it, it's not made that way. Kevin, I wouldn't know for the simple reason my frame rate is is locked to um, um, to thirty. But Kevin, to answer your question on twenty one, uh, sorry, twenty A and twenty one, I've noticed better frame rates. Twenty one is actually not as good as twenty A. Twenty A had better frame rates, so there's obviously been some tweaking happening there. I love this view as well. See the actual engine. Question for you guys now from me. Has anybody noticed when you uh, save your prefs file that you lose all your camera views? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, what John has found is he saves his preferences file with the camera views, loads the new Zebo, imports the preferences file, and then his camera view does not work. So I have to re do all my camera views every single time on the update. What I do is I put all my camera views on the uh, numpad on the right side of my my key keyboard and I, I lock them in with uh, providing it's on what, what what do I have to set Nico to turn it on num lock yeah, num -lock, turn the yeah. num lock on then you use control and a number on your num uh, keys and that will lock a view in and that's what I use now if you don't we don't overwrite that well what happens is he takes his file and he copies it and then overwrites the new preferences file. Alright. Um, so John, here's a suggestion just after what Jacob then said just now. Why don't we try okay. the following. Next time you do an update, let us not overwrite the new file. Let us rather open the old file, copy the preferences out, paste it into the newer file. And let's see if that makes any difference. You know, if you, if you scavenge the one and copy it into the other one. In, a, in other words, in other words, let the Zebra write a, a new preferences file, yeah. then copy and paste my old yes. preferences. Yes. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. Yeah. I haven't tried that because what I've done is I've, I've I've done the update, and because it hasn't got a preference file, I've then copied and pasted my pre preference file in there. Yeah. Good idea. Who came up with that? Thank you. Never thought of that. So, so Jacob, are you saying, uh, is it Jacob? Uh, sorry, Kevin. So you put the update over the, over the top of the last update. I don't. I put a, a fresh install of, of Zebo with the new update and get rid of the, the complete Zebo into the bin. My understanding is when you when you put an update over the top of a, another update, you're you're possibly asking for problems. If you're getting away with it, fine. But uh, I'm, I was just following advice. Well, I usually get away with it, John. So I just put one on top of the other. When it gets to a full version, I change. Or when I run into issues, I change. You know, so that's the only time I actually kill the whole thing and start fresh. Other times I just add on. Well, in which case I'm, I'm doing it all wrong. I apologize and I'll thank you for your input. Appreciate it, Kevin. Thanks for that. And uh, backed up by Nico himself. That's what I shall do on the next update. Because, yes, I've put my cam reviews back in again.
Yeah, I've got the updater, but I've never used it. I, I prefer to do a manual. Well, I don't know about you guys, I enjoyed that flight, that was good fun. Yeah. Very nice, very nice. But I would really love to see that in ortho. Ah, oh, we shall do that. We shall definitely do that. Yes, you need to do that. You, you, you've got to be specific for each aircraft. My camera views are no good for the for the default 738. Uh, it's, it's only for the 4K version of Zebo. George, that's perfectly fine to jump. Uh, the last update contains all the updates, so you don't have to go through the whole series anymore. What on earth is a Resentium yeah, product? Yeah, what the hell's a Resentium product? Sounds like something the proctologist would use. <laughs> I, resent, the I resent you using that on me. <laughs> Do we have a doctor in the house? No. <laughs> Uh, no, I, I haven't used, um, if the Resentium is, is the, what did you call it? Global Earthing, no. Yeah, no, I, I haven't used that. My sides are aching. Well, I do with my sides. Uh, they're, they're killing me now. That scenery, that pole scenery. Uh, okay. What? What? That scenery, you, uh, George. What? Uh, that Carlos Martin. Is that the uh, pole scenery? Which is which? That scenery. Where do you see that Carlos name? You mean this airport where we are at? Oh, no, well, I got it off the org. The link is in the video description below the video. Yeah, I know, but uh, I thought you said it's pulsing. Oh, food. Food, what's that? Uh, you, um, what, what is pulsing? Pul I'm not with you, Johan. You got me completely now. Uh, oh, it's, which was you and the cat? Oh, no, you're talking about Angel. Angel oh. Alpaca. No, no, this is not one of his. The, the departure airport. Angel did the gateway scenery for X-Plane. And the other guy then came and added on top of Angel's uh, scenery the rest of the stuff. So it was like, you know, Angel did the groundwork. The rest was just added yeah, later. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Seriously, I must. I haven't eaten a thing. But I keep doing this. I get to about 8 o'clock at night before I even think about food. Zebo's far more important at the moment. Yeah. Well, well it is. I, I'm, I'm basically done now. I need to basically run. And I thank you guys for joining with me. And Thanks for that, Paul. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Paul. Thank you so much for flying Skymatics Airways. We hope you're going to stay your uh, enjoy your stay in Peru, and we shall catch you guys later uh, over the weekend. Not, I'm not going to fly Zebo again tomorrow. Is my GA day. So if you guys want to check out P3D and the Cessna 182, I'm doing a VFR flight tour all the way from San Diego up to Genoa and we're going to do leg number two and maybe three tomorrow so you guys are welcome to just keep an eye on the uh, channel there's not a fixed time as such I'll just do it when I have time bye bye everybody bye all
Yes, the Monaco GP is for me too. I never miss my GP. That's my second love.